Thanks, Linda and Simon. That was very insightful. So uh, our next guest will be from the uh, Chinese tech giant Baidu. Baidu is uh, the largest, one of the largest Chinese company uh, in China. And thanks to their innovation with the uh, largest search engine in China and other compute platform, uh, Baidu actually drives tens of billion interactions every day. Alice Chen, who is the head of the Baidu US, will be joined by our moderators, Mark Millian, who is the uh, tech writer and editor for the Bloomberg News. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me now? There we go. All right. Um, about four years ago, uh, Baidu, I guess, decided that they uh, should establish a presence in Silicon Valley. Um, and you started uh, building a team from a little office in Cupertino, which has since gotten a lot bigger. Um, but I guess to start, there's a lot of great talent in Beijing. So what kind of drove Baidu to decide that they needed to have a presence here? Yes. Um, so um, back in 2011, so we beginning to talk about uh, what are the more talents that we need in Baidu. And at the time, uh, I was in Baidu. I was managing teams, building ad systems, and, uh, and, and we trying to re-architect existing systems that have been around for over 10 years. So at that time, we say, hey, we need more talents, and not only in building the ad system, but all across all different areas as well, our core business and search, and also infrastructure, and so on. So in 2011, we say, well, let's try set up an R&D office in, in the Silicon Valley. We started in Cupertino. It's where we think that a lot of talents are there from um, the, the nearby companies. A lot of them are living in Cupertino area. And in what I call 1.0 era, we're trying to attract talents who want to go back to China and lead the teams, help build great technology, re-architect and so on. So that's how we got started. We, we see the need to, to, to have, recruit more talent from well. And you've come a long way since then. The, the US operations have been growing fast. I, I was at uh, your office opening just last year in Sunnyvale, and then you, you told me you just moved into a new office because you outgrew the old one. Um, and now you've got a ping pong table and a pool table. Yes, yes. That we carry from the, uh, the old office, I think. Um, so what are, what are some of the projects that your team is working on, aside from playing ping pong? Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good question, yeah. So um, starting from last year, we decided to grow a lot bigger. So in the end of 2013, we moved up from the Cupertino office into uh, Sunnyvale. And in Sunnyvale, we said, well, we're going to grow global teams now. So not only talents that will be willing to go to China and work with China teams and, and so on, but we're going to grow global talents. We have projects here, and we're going to look, look for exciting things. Again, R&D for the China market. So at that time, we say we'll move to Sunnyvale. And since last year until this year, in the middle of the way, uh, we're very fortunate. We have uh, Andrew Wang joining us, and he's such a a great expert that I admire uh, from his work at Coursera. And then we all learned about machine Google learning. Also. And formerly Google as well. And, uh, and for the deep learning technology that he's building. And at that time, we already see a lot of deep learning making great impact to our core business. How we build search, how we do ads, and other parts as well. So we know that we can build up more technologies and you're solving how we process images more intelligently, how we process voice more intelligently. And we know that we can recruit more talents and build out the team here, global talents. And until this year, we outgrew that place in, in the Moffat field, and now we just move into our own building, and, um, and we have about almost 140 people now. And we are on track to grow towards uh, 200 by the end of this year. Wow. 
Um, I feel like we've been hearing a lot about the AI efforts from Baidu. Uh, it's actually rather quickly established the company as, uh, as, a, as a serious force within the artificial intelligence community. Um, what, what is sort of, uh, well, how does AI fit into kind of the, the future of, of Baidu and why is it such an important area of focus? Yes. So overall, as um, Baidu, our core business is a search engine, we connect people to information. And there's also search engine does in, in uh, all along, right? People come here, they search for things, we give them the information they need, they click and they go to the website. But in the mobile era, in the last two and a half years or so, we begin to see a big shift in the user behavior. And on the mobile era, not only they search for the information, they want to act on those information. So we're going to the next era where we call connecting people to services. And a lot of these services are actually offline services. And a lot of our um, customers that work with us are businesses, enterprises, large and small. We have about 600,000 enterprises that work with us and depend on us in leading them and bring uh, customers to them. They want to connect, help us, want us to help them connect these people to these services. So there's a lot of technology behind in understanding what service is suitable for which individual. When in this mobile era, there's so much more data being generated and it's more real time, people want the answers quick. And so there's a very large scale technology need to be built up, large scale machine learning, large scale prediction, large scale recommendation. All this is an essential part how technology needs to fit into this new mobile world of connecting people from online, bringing them to offline. Whether they're going to the movie theater, whether they're going to a restaurant, going to a massage parlor or going to whatever services offline, Going for language training, what have you, any kind of service. Maybe booking a car, I think Uber is one of uh, And going a car, Uber as well, yes, through the map. And so we are beginning to see a lot of information and a lot of connective services required. And we see technology stack at the bottom is the fundamental pillar to make that happen. From machine learning to um, high performance, uh, uh, very faster servers, better data centers, technologies, more in memory distributed processing like Spark. We actually have a very big effort on becoming the Spark community here. And for those of you who are interested in Spark, we actually make Spark scale beyond what, what is possible today. And we're very exciting about that. What is Spark? Uh, Spark is a, is a distributed computing platform. We deploy, um, we need that to process a lot of data massively across tens and thousands so of- It's almost like an Amazon Web Services kind of thing? Yes, it's one of those services that you need to process a lot of data mm. and, and to do an act upon it, to build models. So these are the efforts that we see. We need more talents in the Silicon Valley to help guide this effort to fundamentally change how we do business in China in connecting people to citizens. So why, why Silicon Valley? I mean, you, this, this AI effort, if it's so crucial to the future of Baidu and the distributed computing and some of these other things, why put them in Silicon Valley as opposed to home base? Um, well, in Silicon Valley, we have seen more um, talents. Um, they have been there, done that. They have built some very big systems. And um, we've been do making great strides in, with the talents. And there are a lot of very, very talented engineers in China. Uh, but we see more experienced talents here, uh, and especially global talents. They would like to attract and help, them, help us solve the problem together. Yeah. So we are able to attract them. More and more are joining us. They're very glad that um, we give them the opportunity to work on a lot of data to make the impact really quick. And we are very focused on making things happen quick. I'm sure, it process. also helps to have that direct line into Stanford where Andrew Ng um, spent some time, where some of the, the top minds in AI are, are sort of blooming right now. Um, yes, yes. So I think, of course, in the Silicon Valley, have some of the top notch companies here. And a lot of these challenges that uh, we are hoping to grab. They want to start companies. Actually, we, we are very much a startup mode ourselves in the Silicon Valley. And we like to get the same, same kind of talents. And whether they are going to join a startup, we say, hey, you know, Baidu is like, almost like a well-funded startup, right? So come and do this startup with us. And hey, by the way, you get paid, with, you know, pretty well and uh, competitively. And at the same time, you have access to huge volume of data and to really access you know, all the uh, technology that you, you want to apply. Yeah. And of course, we work with a university like Stanford and Berkeley as well. Uh, and I'm, myself, I'm a Berkeley alum, so. Uh, yeah, so there's a rivalry there. Yeah. 
Um, so I so I guess the teams here, if they're operating like a startup, they're they're fairly independent, operating independently from the China. How do they how do they interact with uh, with headquarters, especially when probably some of them don't even speak Mandarin? Yes. So um, we we have um, teams built up here, and some of the managers that uh, you know and the uh, product managers here are working with the China teams. Uh, we do a lot of video conferencing, just like many other remote offices. Uh, in other companies, they would do. Um, and we also fly people back and forth to facilitate the communication. And we also encourage the, uh, the uh, tech leads from the, uh, from the China core team to come to the Silicon Valley and work with us as well. So a lot of communications and uh, setting the project priorities uh, and, and executing them, yeah. Now the, uh, the US team uh, used to be early on Primarily Chinese speakers, right? And that's uh, I think that's kind of changed over time. Um, so now that you have, I think you mentioned that there's something like forty percent non-Chinese speakers in in the group now. Does that make communication difficult between the different teams or back to headquarters? Uh, no, I think the mo the model has changed from what I call US 1.0 to US 2.0. And back in the the first three years in US 1.0. We are mainly to get the talent spend most of the time in China, working with the China team, and leading the team in China. And some of them, they probably spend up to 80, 90% of the time in China. So, so there's 1.0. So in that case, you have to be fairly fluent and be effective in working closely with China team. And we moved into the, uh, in, since last year, 2014, and beginning of last year, we moved into the US 2.0 phase, where we build a local projects here. So, and it's true, we have like maybe 40% of our, our engineers, uh, they are non-Chinese, but we can work effectively with local projects here, identify the areas, and having the, uh, the product managers or the managers to communicate the requirements and understanding how we fit in, how the technology we built can fit in with, with the China um, uh, um, teams. And we have been successful in doing that. So I'm very glad that for over the past um, year, year and a half or so, and we have, um, we're we'll making launches and making um, real impact to our revenue generating platforms, to our search platforms, and so on. Yeah, those are very mission critical. So you, um, in the in Silicon Valley, you obviously you have to offer some perks, and you guys do offer perks um, besides the pool table. Um, I think you have a, a a six month or so exchange program to kind of allow the employees to move between China and the U.S. Um, how has that sort of played into your recruiting and sort of getting people uh, into your group? Um, yes. In terms of recruiting, uh, I think uh, many of the, the, the talents, they join us because they want to solve tough problems and they want to be able to have a big impact quick. And um, I think having the perks is good and I think uh, definitely our perks is, is comparable to the Silicon Valley practice. Uh, but many of them, I think they just join us, they want to seriously get something going, yeah. But we do have a, a great patio uh, where you can play bocce balls. Uh, that's a new addition to our pool table and ping pong. Oh, I love bocce balls. Yeah, you know, okay, great, so, yeah. Coming over next week. <laughs> okay, good, we can arrange that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have there been any, uh, any challenges in, uh, in recruitment as, as sort of like the relatively new kid on the block in Silicon Valley? Yes, yes, so a lot of times we have to, uh, I think the most challenging uh, uh, area aspect I would say is that we are competing with startups. Yeah, as I say, we, want to, we are very much a startup ourselves and we want to hire people who have a startup mindset. And to them in the Silicon Valley, there are a lot of hard startups to join as well. So they say, well, we have to join a hard startup and, uh, or uh, 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 Baidu, right? Or one of the big three internet companies one of the big three in China. Internet companies, right? So I think for us, we've been able to attract them because we say that, hey, look, you, know, we, you, you get the project up and running quickly, you get the impact right away, you can see results right away, and the impact is, and the things you can work on across many different areas. So we are very flexible in choosing the projects and, and having the impact. So a lot of our talents eventually like us because they, are, they have this exposure to, make, uh, to do a lot of things across the board very easily. And just for instance, some of the people, they, they say, oh, I've been working on software, but I want to work more closely with hardware acceleration and how to make that even bring it to the next level. And we continue to push the envelope uh, beyond what, what, what it is today. So we can do it really quick. Oh, yeah, 
go ahead, let's do it. And great ideas to just go ahead and do it. And they like to be able to, to act on quick. And we hope that we can compete more effectively with, with the startups. So you find your, yourself uh, battling more with, with startups and sort of your employees going on to create their own startups than you do with, say, Google or Facebook, who are also you know, almost just down the street trying to hire some of the same people? Yes. So we, we actually have quite a bit of people who, who are in uh, Facebook, Google, and Yahoo. They're, for, they're there for a while. And they're thinking of we're just going out to do a startup. And then we are trying to tell them, hey, look, if you want to do a startup, why not join us? Right. And uh, we have ping pong table, we have a pool, <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, food as well. It's very much a startup mentality, right? So, yeah, we are successful in recruiting uh, many of them who are thinking of uh, trying something new. And we say, hey, look, we are very much a startup. We are well funded. Immediately, you can make this impact. And you can do any small experiments against hundreds of millions of people very easily. I mean, already we have like a, our MAUs, uh, I mean, monthly active users on any of our platforms is uh, over 600 million. So any of the things that we do, I think it's an engineer's dream to be able to make very quick impact uh, to, to people. So when you're trying to hire, you know, a, a top American um, engineer, for example, or um, even if you're trying to convince the, the management in China to expand the U.S. operation, does the geopolitical tensions play into it at all, being relatively new to operating in the U.S.? I mean, the, the U.S. and Chinese governments kind of go back and forth on hacking and trade talks and all that stuff. Um, I, I don't see not, not as much. Um, I guess there are a lot of talents here. And... Um, for talents that are interested and we are talking to us and we are many to choose from and they, they believe in, we are trying to attract them on the problems they are trying to solve and we have many, many tough problems, technical problems to solve that can bring in immediate impact to, to the world. So, um, so they, they are interested in that and I think we are able to focus on the technology problems rather than the geopolitical, whatever the other issues. Uh, so I, I know we have a, a few, on, more than a few entrepreneurs in this audience who would probably be interested in this question. Um, you've done a few acquisitions in the U.S. Um, are you are you looking to do more acquisitions or investments or anything along those lines in startups here? Oh yes, absolutely. So we do a lot of um, strategic investments uh, uh, here uh, in, the, in the valley. So what we do, we have big and small. I mean, we um, we know that we invest in Uber. Yeah, those are some of the very big deals. Um, That's and we, one of the small ones, right? And <laughs> the small ones, yes. And we invest a lot of, uh, and we do strategic investment. So we're looking at startups with promising technologies, and we know it's a good fit to our business. Uh, we evaluate them, we work closely with them, and we invest in them. And some we just acquire. Yeah. So one that we just did very recently that we worked with them for a while, and we know that it's going to help us in accelerating a lot of our computing and our applications, and we readily invest in them right away. And, then, and we are also a good partner for them because they can really deploy into a, a, a massive data center very easily with very little obstacle. And we are driving that effort uh, with the China team. I think we have time for one question if anyone's dying to ask Alex something or get him to buy your company. Yes? So the question, the question was, uh, what is the long-term relationship between Baidu U.S. and the headquarters in China? Is is your U.S. operation an R&D center? Yes. So our U.S. R&D center is primarily for R&D. We are not entering the market here. So we'll always be a technology powerhouse and you're solving some of the tough problems uh, in, uh, in the, for the China market. And there are many, many problems to solve. Going forward, we may rethink and see what we do, but currently we just, this is purely an R&D center. And, um, and we already have the path worked out very well, and we're continuing executing down the path in bringing, uh, solving tough problems on connecting people to services, no to uh, error. All right, thank you, Alex. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, guys.